Today's class is offered to the general public by the BYU Family History Library. Our presenter is Elder James Tanner, who is a wonderful genealogist and has extensive knowledge and background in family history. So if you haven't been to his, one of his classes before, we're glad that you would join us today. And so now we'll time, turn the time over to Elder, Elder Tanner. So. Okay, let me just share my screen here. And let's see, there we go. And here we go. Okay, you should be able to see that hopefully. Yes, we can. Good, okay, well, the question today is where do I go for genealogical help? And uh, we're gonna cover some places you can go in person and some places where you can get online and, and a few other places. So this is a kind of a general overview of every place that I could think of that you might wanna check to see what kind of help you could get. Um, I, I guess the important thing just to understand that when you're faced with the reality of doing genealogical research, you, you might well feel lost and all alone in the world. Um, genealogy has not uh, been known as a team sport. It's not a competitive sport. It's not reported in the, in the sports page. Uh, and uh, uh, it's, it kind of goes under, the, under the, the, any kind of news or anything. So most people, when they begin to get interested in genealogy and their family history and what finding their uh, place where they came from, they might go to an ad, they might look at uh, one of Ancestry's ads or one of the people who are, are you know, prominent out there. But really, uh, it's helpful to know that there are places locally uh, around the world, uh, probably close to wherever you live, that you can get help. And so we're going to go and explore all those. So we're gonna answer the questions, where do you start? Where can you go for help? And who can you talk to? And those are all good questions and they're all things that can be answered. Uh, kind of to understand what, what happens here is that there are things we know that we know and there are known unknowns. That's to say, there are things that we now know we don't know but there are also unknown unknowns. There are things we do not know, we don't know. How's that? If you go through that a little carefully, you'll see kind of where you end up in genealogy because we end up knowing some things. We, we know this. Um, some of us, as a matter of fact, don't, but um, it's something we might know. For instance, we might know, we say, well, I know who my parents are and uh, then you might take a DNA test and find out that you didn't know who your parents were and you were actually adopted or uh, some other situation. So sometimes we just live with the unknown and we, and we move from what we know already and then we expand what we are looking for into the things that we don't know. So, but this is called the survey part of genealogical research. You're trying to find out what you and your family already know. And this involves talking to people. It involves looking for documents, uh, records, letters, photographs, anything that might help you to understand your personal family as you start out. And that isn't necessarily uh, something that I, can, that I can give you a list of. Uh, there's just all sorts of different things. Artifacts, for example, uh, one of the artifacts that I kind of grew up with was in a drawer in, in uh, one of uh, where we lived for a while, there was an old uniform from World War I and it was my grandfather's uniform. And uh, now that I'm years later, I kind of wish that I'd been the one that ended up with some of that, that stuff, but, and, uh, but I did end up with all the information and a lot of the letters and the documents, which helps. But 
this is really where we start. We start with our family, our own family and what they have. You start with yourself and your immediate family and record as much information and information you can. Now, some of people, a lot of people end up with that. In other words, once they get into their immediate family and their grandparents, they pretty well stay there and write family histories and stories and collect photographs and make all of that uh, information just uh, seems to be, can be almost endless. But the question is when you have, uh, or when the issue is when you have a question, where do you go? So let's, let's kind of explore some of the different places. And I would start with fam finding a family history center or a family search affiliate library like the Brigham Young University Family History Library in Provo, Utah. Well, all those little blue and red spots around, the, the red spots are libraries uh, in different parts of the world, and the blue spots are uh, family history centers or family history libraries. Now, you might look at that and say, well, wait a minute, BYU is a library and it's not on there. And the answer is, well, Brigham Young University Library is not a family search library or a family search center. Uh, it was in fact the original family history center in 1962, but uh, the library was taken over by the university and it is part of the universe, Brigham Young University and not necessarily a part of family search as up directly. Although all of the volunteer missionaries who work at the BYU family history library are, uh, basically connected to family search. So uh, you can go in here in this map, uh, and there's the link down at the bottom, but you can find it by just saying uh, family history center um, and search for family history centers online. And it will bring up this map link and you can then zoom in and look at all the places. And you'll find uh, that there are just lots and lots of family history centers around the world. Um, now, even, uh, even if you were to uh, live someplace like the middle of Australia or out in, uh, in Africa, you'd still find family history centers. They may not be quite as convenient as they are uh, in other parts of the world, but they are available. And most of them are connect, you can connect with uh, by either by telephone or uh, they have the address and you could send them a letter. Um, and I've mentioned this, the BYU Family History Library, and the B BYU Family History Library has a virtual family help history help desk. And if you look at this screenshot of the Family History Library's website, you'll see up in the corner, it says free classes and webinars. And obviously you must have located that because if you're listening to this webinar, then you know at least where these webinars and, and classes are being taught. And then there's also virtual family history help. And if you click on the family, on the uh, family history, this little button up here, virtual family history help, it will take you to uh, directly to a link that will uh, connect you with the um, family history library. So here's all of the different options for learning about things from the Family History Library directly. And as was mentioned, these webinars and classes that we have are uploaded after they're presented to the BYU Family History Library YouTube channel. And uh, this is the BYU Family History Library YouTube channel. And you go to youtube.com and type in BYU Family History Library our family history library webinars, and you come to this page. Last check, we were getting close to 700 videos in all different topics. Those same videos are also available on by links on the BYU Family History Library website. So if you have some problem getting into YouTube, for example, you can see the same um, presentations on a on the BYU Family History Library website. So what does this mean to start out with? Well, if you have a question, for example, uh, 
one of the, there's the family history guide. One of the first things, uh, one of the most recent uh, webinars, classes that was presented was uh, on the family history guide. So this will tell you to uh, about another resource that we'll talk about in just a minute. So there's just, uh, it becomes almost overwhelming immediately because there's so much. But if you have to think through what you're, what you're doing and what your questions are, so if you say, how do I get started in, in doing family history, then there's all sorts of, of videos here that talk about getting started. If, there's, if the question is something more complex, like how do I find my German ancestor who immigrated to the United States in 1860, uh, that may require a little bit more information and uh, a, quite a bit of learning to get to the point of answering that particular type of question. But when we're talking generally and on how to do things, then like how to use the Family Search Wiki and other things like that, and if all those terms don't make sense to you, then then all of these helps out there are the things that you're looking for that will answer those questions and start getting you into uh, an understanding of what family search is all about and what family history is all about. Um, so basically though, you can use the YouTube. Uh, YouTube is a great place to go to get a lot of information. And even though the BYU Family History Library has uh, their, their videos there, so do all the other major genealogical organizations out there. And there's literally thousands and probably tens of thousands of, of videos that talk about uh, BYU, a bit talk about um, family history. So going on to YouTube, putting in the word genealogy, and you'll get probably a few thousand responses. And there's all sorts of topics. The more, the more specifically you search, the more likely it is you'll find something that you're, you're looking for. Um, one of the biggest attractions of, uh, for genealogists in general has always been for many, many years, the Family History Library in Salt Lake City, Utah. Uh, the Family History Library in Salt Lake City is in a single location. It's the actual main library for the Family History Library. And it is located about um, 45 miles north of Provo, or you can look at the other way, we're located about 45 miles south of Salt Lake City. And the Family History Library has, over the years, uh, I've participated in helping and had uh, organized tours come to the library from various uh, genealogical societies around the country, and even from other countries, that have come there specifically to do research and to, to work on on things in the library. Now, some important things about that. We're thinking of the library, the Family History Library as being in a specific place. Well, the reason why uh, historically you would come to the library is because they had a, a vast collection of, of genealogical books. They had over 2.4 million rolls of microfilm that were available and many, many other resources. And over the last so probably around the last 10 or 15 years, um, almost <clears throat> everything, that, excuse me, <clears throat> almost everything that the library has, has been digitized. And what's not digitized is now online. And so, uh, meaning you can actually talk to people from the Family History Library. I mentioned that we have the virtual desk in, in, uh, at BYU. And if you click on our link, you go directly to the virtual desk and you're talking to one of the volunteers during the time that we're, that we're open. And then you can ask questions and, and work. The Family History Library in Salt Lake City has a research help link. And when you use the research help link, you can go get online consultations and they're all 20 minutes long. And they're uh, basically with people who have a specific knowledge about the area that you're in, interested in. And you really sign up for a specific time, uh, make an appointment, and then you get the 20 minute consultation. You can do one of those a week, 
for as long as you want to ask questions and get help from the, from the people at the Family History Library in Salt Lake City. Um, we are in a, a little bit different in BYU and, and we're a little bit less structured, but we still have lots of very high level expert uh, people who can help you in, in different countries and different parts of the world, different languages and all sorts of things. So here you have one-on-one -on -one help from people uh, in the community, particularly who are um, knowledgeable and will help you to get through uh, any particular questions you have. Whether you're starting out uh, asking, well, what is family search and what do I do when I click? So those are the kinds of beginning questions, or you could say, um, where can I find my ancestors in Italy or in France or in Germany or in England? And uh, those kinds of more, more specific questions. Okay, now, <clears throat> oops, wrong direction, sorry folks. The familysearch.org uh, website itself has a learning center and the learning center is where do you start? And when you go into familysearch.org, they'll be getting started in all sorts of links and things. And as you get to that, they will give you uh, some options here of lessons that have been presented by the Family History Library in Salt Lake. And you can use these, uh, follow these lessons. They're step-by-step -step lessons and they'll get you introduced to, the, to all of the subjects and things that are available. Uh, they're usually by uh, the uh, people who are uh, very knowledgeable and very well known in the community as far as, as their specific area of expertise. And for example, now I mentioned that uh, the 20 minute consultations. Well, in those consultations, uh, I've been on doing that now for um, more than a year. And uh, most all of my consultations are in Spanish with people in Latin America. And uh, lately I've been getting uh, more in English, but they are also 100% almost, I can't remember one that hasn't been interested in finding the origin of the immigrant and whether they had immigrated to the United States or immigrated to Mexico or to uh, Ecuador or Colombia or Argentina or, or Uruguay. They're all the, exactly the same issue. So there's this, there are things that uh, are common that you may find that the question you're asking is something that many people know have asked the same question. And that's why these presentations and the things, the, the video presentations that, I, that are in, on YouTube and the, uh, the specific uh, learning centers are valuable because they realize and have been asked the question so many times and they and we all do these um, videos and classes because of the specific questions that we've been asked. And uh, hopefully that they're uh, a list, a, a way to get through that information in uh, efficiently and without too much pain. Now, one of the major things on the Family Search website that helps people get started or can advance at any level is the Family Search Research Wiki. And the Research Wiki uh, it has over, over 10,000, over 100,000 articles. And those articles are on every specific area of the, of the um, world. And for instance, this one is begin your genealogy quest and it, and it begins how to get started and it'll, oh, don't touch the screen, how to get started. And then it will um, also go into more detail with more links to more places. And, the, and this is an ex, a very exhaustive list of, of, of genealogical resources all around the world in almost every country of the world in, that has any kind of records that are available. Now, one thing is that if, if you start to get involved in genealogy, you'll find out that there's a sizable genealogical community. It's worldwide and, it, uh, and there are uh, 
if you become more and more in, uh, involved in genealogical uh, research and doing genealogy, uh, you will want to get involved with uh, genealogical and historical societies and their conferences. Um, when I started doing genealogy mm, around 40 years ago, I was totally oblivious. I had no idea that there was anyone else in the world interested in genealogy. And I slowly began to realize that, yes, there was a genealogy library where I was living in, in Arizona, and that uh, there were people there that could help me. And I did go to Salt Lake City to the Family History Library and, and got a little bit more help there. But over the years, I began to understand that, uh, that there were a lot of people out there involved in genealogical research and, and people with extraordinary backgrounds. And, and uh, these people were the ones that were out there teaching and helping. And so over the years, and by taking uh, classes directly from Brigham Young University is how I developed uh, the background and knowledge that I can now share by, by going online and doing videos and classes. It was a long process, but it's a, a very rewarding process because there's a lot to learn. And uh, one of the statements that I've made over and over again is that if genealogy wasn't really difficult at times and very challenging, it probably wouldn't have kept my attention for, for 40 years. Um, so you can go back to the Family Search Research Wiki and for each state and each country and even down to counties uh, in the United States and counties in England and places like that and find <clears throat> lists of genealogical societies and uh, uh, associations. Uh, my wife and I spent some time back in um, Annapolis, Maryland, digitizing records for family search at the, Mer at the Maryland State Archives. And while we were there, uh, we joined the Anne Arundel County Genealogical Society and spent uh, a year attending their meetings and, and uh, meeting those people. And this was a, a very interesting and very rewarding experience. So, and they had, they had their own presentations and uh, people there to help and, and uh, could help, help you with, with doing research. So you just may find that to be another way of getting genealogical society. And here in Utah, there are a number of, of uh, genealogical societies. This is one page, an example uh, for a type of, for the kind of information that you'll find about uh, the, the genealogical societies. These are this is a list of the New York societies with the New York Genealogical and Biographical Society, which is one of the oldest uh, genealogical societies in the United States, and the New York Historical Society. And many of these have publications, they have papers, they have uh, libraries, they have uh, lots of, of huge organizations. For example, um, there's a website called AmericanAncestors.org, and it, it's uh, part of the New England Historic Genealogical Society. And uh, that genealogical society is headquartered in Boston, Massachusetts, and has a, a huge library of resources for all of the New England states and even outside of New England. And there in another in Massachusetts is the Mayflower Society or the uh, General Society of the Passengers, Mayflower Passengers. And it was, and it also has a library. And these uh, are organizations that you join and obviously they have a charge sometimes to join. But if you have the interest in these specific areas, then these societies can provide you with, with a tremendous amount of information. You may not be aware but uh, there are universities and colleges that have courses on genealogy. One of the ones that uh, is, I've highlighted here is Boston University has a genealogy studies program. Uh, Univ Brigham Young University and Brigham Young University Idaho both have uh, degree courses in uh, genealogy and family history. And you can, sign up and take those courses uh, remotely. 
uh, through distance learning. And in some cases, if you pursue it uh, sufficiently, you can get a degree in, in family history from both organizations. So these are, there's ways to, to go to move from being just casually interested in the idea of doing family history to getting really serious about it. And, and many of these people go on to work in libraries and, and be employed by um, genealogy societies. There's also an inter, a national organization in the United States, uh, the Association of Professional Genealogists that lists professionals who um, are available around the, around the United States and, and specialize around the world in doing and researching genealogy, obviously for a fee. So there is a commercial and might say a professional level here where people are, are actually working at a professional level. Uh, many of the people who uh, work for the large genealogical libraries around the country are also um, <clears throat> professionals and have degrees in uh, either in library science, which help, helps them with the research or uh, directly in, in family history. Um, <clears throat> might mention a, a few of the larger libraries. There's the Brigham Young University Family History Library, where we are outside of the Family History Library in Salt Lake City. And uh, the BYU Family History Library is the second largest family history library in the, in the world. And uh, there's other genealogical libraries scattered across the United States. And a lot of them are partners with uh, Family Search. And to see some of the partners with Family Search, you go to the Family Search menu and uh, look under Search and then go to Books. And when you go to Books, you'll see a list of connections to uh, the partners who are part of helping supply family history material to um, Family Search and putting, putting, making that available on the Family Search website. So these degree programs that are available, uh, as I mentioned, there's the BYU Department of History, which has the family history research and BYU Idaho that has a certificate in family history research that could be also expanded into a degree. So there's lots of other high level educational opportunities uh, listed on the research wiki. You can see down here, there's uh, National Institute for Genealogical Studies in Canada. Um, and again, Boston University and Brigham Young University that are listed. So these are some of the areas where you can get uh, even more advanced information about uh, genealogy. These are two um, universities in uh, Scotland, and both of these offer advanced degrees in genealogy. So you can get a master's degree in genealogy. And I guess the reason that I would mention that the kind of this levels, because as I, as I showed you, if you go from the very, very basic at the beginning, you'll find that uh, as you keep learning, and as you keep applying yourself, and, and you have to be self-motivated because there's really not, uh, you know, it's not a real, uh, uh, something where you would be having a, like a team or something. And uh, it's, but it's a very, very satisfying and uh, learning opportunity. And I wanted to make sure that everyone who listened understood that th there, there was really no top to this, that you could keep learning throughout your life. And there's, there's ways of continuing to, to gather more and more information. Now, why would you want to do this? Well, as you go back in, your t in learning about your family, you're going to find that there are, are times when you really need a lot more information and you need a lot more uh, understanding of how to, uh, how to go into records and interpret the records and use the information that's there in the records to find more additional information about your family. I have a situation that I've been working on just recently where the information uh, is just not there. It's been over a hundred years of people doing research and uh, the information about the individuals that I found recently in the family search family tree uh, is essentially wrong. 
and uh, the people are not identified. There's no one's ever found these people. And uh, they didn't just miraculously appear. There had to be some uh, basis for their living. And as I've been starting to do research, I'm finding uh, information from cemeteries. I'm finding religious organizations, uh, records. I'm finding uh, mentions in uh, census records. So there's there's a, a way to focus on and, uh, and, and identify the people and make them into real individuals that you can begin to, uh, you're already related. You might as well get to know who they are. Now we can jump out to some of the larger, other larger websites. And, and I use this one as an example. Uh, MyHeritage.com is a, is a huge program uh, website as a huge website and uh, program across the world. And uh, they're headquartered in, in Israel and primarily focused on Europe. But uh, a lot of people's ancestors came from Europe. And this is a place where you would go to get a lot more information about uh, some of your European ancestors and connect with them. And this website, education.myheritage.com, is the beginning of the, of, it was started quite recently, about three years ago, actually. And it has been uh, the recipient of, of literally hundreds of articles and uh, instructional material on uh, genealogy. Uh, likewise, you have uh, a huge amount of information on YouTube from my heritage and from uh, ancestry and all of the other, oh, sorry, <laughs> should have turned that off. Uh, all of the different areas of, uh, of different companies have their own big, have their own big, um, am I still online? Can you hear me? Okay. <laughs> Sorry, we've got telephone call taking over our, our, our thing here. Okay, let me just do something real quick. Can you still hear me? Good. Okay. Sorry about that. Little technical difficulties there with the telephone taking over my whole presentation. Okay. So when you go to, when you learn about these large companies that are online and have billions and billions of records, then you begin to understand that not only do they have the billions and billions of records, but they also have courses and genealogy uh, webinars. They have their own online. Many of them have Facebook pages with extensive amount of information. And so Facebook, you go into Facebook and look for genealogy, you'll find uh, a huge number of, of entries of people and articles and, and, uh, and educational things. Uh, this is just, it, it seems like, as I said, a little bit more than overwhelming at the beginning, because as you get into it, you find out that there are just, just literally hundreds, if not thousands of these um, are, uh, places to go. And don't forget that there are a lot of books on both paper and online. Um, the family, FamilySearch.org website has over 500,000 digitized books. And those uh, are completely usable, except for the ones that are in copyright and then they're restricted. But it's always a good idea when you look for a book online to go look, if you find it on the website and, and somebody says it's not um, available online because it's copyrighted, then go look for it again. Put it into a Google search, look for the book, it's very possible that someone has the book and it's able to, in a sense, check the book out. One of the biggest sources for this is a website called archive.org, A-R-C-H-I-V-E.org. They have over 34 million completely digitized and indexed books. So totally searchable. 
So there's just so many resources out there that, uh, that whenever I get, get going into a research project, I just simply have to stop periodically and think, okay, now where, have, where else haven't I looked? And when I do that, I basically keep opening up into more and more resources. And it seems like uh, eventually, I always hear the question from people that they've looked everywhere. And that comment's been made so many times. And my answer is, don't say that to me because you're not that old and you haven't spent that much time doing genealogy to look everywhere. And so we just start again and, uh, and get looking at all of the other resources that are available. And I, this, is, this right here is uh, one of the biggest events or the biggest event in the genealogical world. And that is uh, the Roots Tech web uh, conference that's held because of the pandemic that occurred. Uh, the conference, which had always been in person for, for over 10 years, uh, was transformed into an all online virtual conference for free. Um, previously, it was rather expensive to travel to Salt Lake and live there for a week and go to the conference. and. Uh, had to be registered and pay for registration. And then when it was transformed into a virtual conference, it, it was free. Well, the number of people who attended the first, last conference before, before the pandemic were about between 20 and 30,000 people. That seems like quite a bit, but the minute that the conference went online, uh, that number in, the, in 2020, when they were in 21, when they, um, were virtual for the first time. There were over one and a half million people who uh, who signed into and participated on the on the website. Because of that, they have kept all of this information online, and so there are more than a thousand uh, directly in, instructional articles from the very very le basic level to very very advanced levels of genealogical research. And this is all on the Roostech website. Well, then again, it, we had another one just recently that's usually in February, March range in there. And we had the Roostech for 2022 and 2022 Roostech had millions and millions of people watch. And there were, are, now there's, I don't even know the total, but it's well over, probably over 1500 to 2000 videos on this website that you can watch. And all of this is free. You can just click on and watch this and, and learn as much as you want and uh, go back through it and tell you understand and, and get all of the information that you need in order to progress. And then you get, there's different line, in, there's different tracks, we call them tracks at, um, uh, on Roots Tech. So you can have a track for getting started uh, you've got uh, a track for um, just about anything you can think of, um, English research, Spanish re language research. They have dozens and dozens of languages here. Uh, yeah, the, pres the presentations are in those languages for the people in those countries. And uh, there's lots of others in English that are about those countries. So. There's just uh, it's just a wealth of information here, and if you if you want to just get involved with it, part of these are on on YouTube. Part of the presentations are on YouTube, but part but the majority of them are simply here on the rootstech.org website. So you go to rootstech.org, and they'll be there for the rest of this year and into next year when they have another conference and probably add another few thousand uh, presentations from around the world. So learning how to do family history and genealogy takes both time and effort. It is not something that uh, you can learn in, you know, it's, there's no simple way. Although a lot of people say, well, you, it's really easy to get started. Well, it is really easy to get started, especially if you're starting with yourself because you can sit down and write what you know about yourself and create a, a life history in a journal. Uh, that may not be it turn out to be as easy as you think um, when you get back into trying to remember everything that you did in your life. Uh, 
There's some of us who've been writing for years and we still find that uh, a lot of the information that we thought we had, we uh, did not. But learning how to do family history is, uh, takes time, it takes effort. But as, you've, as I've tried to show in this uh, presentation, there is just an amazing amount of information out there and beginning with very fundamental basics up to very complex type things. Now, there's one more thing I wanted to mention, and that is uh, getting a DNA test. Now, a lot of people lately have been talking about DNA. Well, if you get a DNA test, and this is going to be really short, but if you get a DNA test, you'll get, as part of that, um, with one of the major DNA companies, uh, MyHeritage or Ancestry or 23andMe, you'll get, a, you'll get some kinds of information and you'll also get some matches with other people who, who are potential relatives. Now, with, but that, that's, not a, that's the end of it. Uh, your ethnicity estimate tells you uh, potentially uh, where your family came from around the world. And if that's all you're interested in, that's about the entire basis of the DNA. But to go further than that, you really have to get involved in family history and have a, a family tree workable information. And it's helpful to have it shared on a big website like Ancestry or MyHeritage where you can get that information, where you can get contacts from literally millions of other people uh, who are your potential relatives. And I would just emphasize that DNA is, a, is a, an interesting place to get started, but it's not going to help you without the other uh, accumulation of information that you go through when you do start doing some genealogical research. I've talked a little bit about researching in genealogy, and I would just say that we've got uh, some, uh, up, some uh, presentations that are coming up uh, in the, in the next, next few weeks that talk about how we do research. And then uh, we're going to be doing some live research online uh, kind of cold running in and unprepared and un unrehearsed uh, qu answering questions about genealogy online in, uh, in some of the classes here that we have coming up. Okay, do we have any questions? Uh, I don't see any, James. I'm looking down, looking up the list here. Is there a handout for this class? Okay, well, as as we, when there is a question for a handout, a lot of times the information is right there. Uh, we will put up the slides with have the links and the explanation. Anything else? I ended early for the first time in history, folks, so. Okay, well, thank you. Thanks, Elder Tanner.